then a lot of the things you probably endeavor to do or are happening in your life will go the right way because you are a lucky person mm. or, or things are stacked on your side. Mm. That's how I will think about it. If your stars are aligned. If your stars are aligned. Mm. Yes. Lakini moja tu ikitupa nini? Hivi. Nyota ikikataa kidogo tu hivi. Becomes another problem. Changes. Hauna <laughs> moto. That's a good one. Tala. Yes. We've been talking about Tala. Tujijenge na Tala. Being in the country for 10 years. And also and so on and so forth. So, uh, I assume that you've come from your head office. Which must be somewhere along Kangundo Road. Over Tala. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> <tell her>. yeah. <laughs> so what's what's the origin of this name Tala? Uh, that's a good question and I think it has been asked before on this platform. Mm. And uh, Tala let me start by actually saying that Tala is a company, is actually a global company. We are not just based in Kenya. Um, we started in Kenya 10 years ago as you've mentioned back in 2014 and then went out to other markets. And if you look at the mission that Tala has, it's actually to expand financial access to underserved communities. And so we looked at what, which other markets can we tap into this um, space that we want to, to service. So from Kenya, we went all the way to Philippines. So we also in Philippines. From Philippines, we went into Mexico. And then we are also in the U.S. as our headquarters office based in Santa Monica, California. Mm. And we are also in India. So those are the spaces we operate in. And before that, Tala back in 2014, we started off as Mkopo Rahisi. Mm. And that, of course, would resonate within the local Kenyan context. You would understand what Mkopo Rahisi is. Mm. But as we expanded, it became a global outfit. We had to settle for a name that then would resonate with all our customers across the different markets. Mm. So Tala actually means different things in different languages. When you go to Philippines, the language is, is a language called Tagalog. So it means something in their language and they're able to resonate with it. Mm. If you go to India, there's, um, I think, Sanskrit. Either Tala means something like a star. Mm -hmm. And also here in Kenya, uh, of course, there's Tala that you've mentioned, Kangundo Road. Mm. But I understand that there's a local language, I'm not so sure which one in particular, that Tala means something to them. Mm. Like counting, almost like counting something. That's when you have the RIRO issue. <laughs> and the word Tala becomes Tala, which yeah. means count. Yes. So, 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 so Yes. Oh, okay. That's the origin, okay. actually. <laughs> That's a red with that, with that, red with red red You red put red the ara <laughs> in the tara, the L -O. it becomes to count. I'm so confused, but okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the origin, basically. Just looking at how do we uh, globalize this brand. And, and make it relatable. And to make it relatable in every market that we're in. Exactly. Ah makes a lot of sense okay so when you started as mkopra hisi and then you were moving as tala what was the business then and is it still the business today so we've we've gone through a journey and and i think this 10 year point is just a good time to reflect on that kind of journey that we've had mm. tala is actually a pioneering fintech company mm. um oh sorry before you move on uh shambisa is actually in kitaita Tala is to count. Ah, perfect. Okay, let's continue. So Tala started, um, like we are the pioneers in that space. Um, when we began, digital finance was not really a thing that was properly understood. But there's a gap that was identified, which uh, our founder, she's called Shivani Siroya, realized that there's a gap which traditional financial institutions are not um, servicing. So then it was a question of how do we get into that space and bring all these underserved and banked people within the financial system. So at that time it was heavy on credit. How do we extend credit to um, this segment of the population? But over, over time over that journey and because one of the key principles we embody as Tala is how do we design our products with the customer at the center of it. So there's a lot of customer centricity. And there's an evolution. So you start with um, extending microloans, but as you journey with your customer, you realize there are certain unique needs that they have that then we need to start also addressing. So over that period of time, we've thought through with our customers in mind, how do we evolve as Tala? So initially, heavily known for digital lending, 
but we are now moving, we're in that stage of evolution where we want to become a full financial services provider and roll out other products that will involve payment, savings, and what have you. Mm -hmm. Just to ensure that that journey of evolution that our customer is experiencing, that you're also working with them. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. You talk about working with the customer uh, because, look, uh, when we look at how, what, the, what the lending uh, atmosphere has been, that it was really just fulfilling a need for people, right? You need to borrow whatever. What is it? 5,000 shillings? Mm. You borrow, you pay back or not pay back in some cases. And then, you know, you move on. The business continues. But then when you talk about working hand in hand with a customer, have you actually seen that folks have been able to have access to this credit and have grown as a result of it and seen actual growth because of the service that you've been able to provide for them? And at, at Shal, actually, that is a key thing for us because one of the other ways we like to look at ourselves is that beyond just being a financial services provider, we're actually a data-driven company. A lot of our decisions and how we project or how we roll out some of our products are heavily dependent on the kind of data we have. And out of the insights of that data is then how we tailor these unique sort of products that will meet our customer needs. Mm. And over time, as Tala, we have done research. We have come out with uh, impact study reports. And even um, there's, a, there's something we call the Money Match Report that we release also. Mm. And these reports just go into trying to examine what is the impact that um, this space of digital lending, and also Tala in particular, has at the end of the day. Because you are not just fulfilling a need of somebody getting a quick loan to settle some emergency, mm. but we are trying to push for that agenda around financial inclusion. So we have to measure um, against that parameter. Are we having that real impact? So if you look at those kind of reports, you'll actually see a lot of um, interesting insights. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we've also noticed is um, even from a gender disaggregated sort of data, mm. you will find interesting insights around how women will borrow and how their repayment sort of um, approach is mm -hmm. as compared to men, the youth, um, small, med medium enterprises and th that kind of thing. So you're almost able to, out of those insights, realize that if this is the segment of the population that is taking this kind of credit, how then are they using it to improve their lives? Um, has there been, especially when you look like at our, let me call them mature borrowers, mm -hmm. So somebody that you've worked with, either the 10 years that we've been around, or 8 or 9 or 7 years. This has been a consistent customer that has borrowed from the get-go. If you trace their journey, and we, we actually take um, customer testimonials, and one of my colleagues was here the other day during um, drive, and he can better even speak to that because we, we are able to go to the ground and, and capture testimonials, and customers actually saying how Tala has changed their lives if they had a business, how that has made them improve from one stage to the other. Mm. So those are the kind of data we rely on, just to also make sure, in as much as we are a business, I will still tracking to our mission, because at the core of it, we are a mission-driven company, which is about enhancing financial inclusion. Okay. From in those years, do you think this market, or no, your business, has gotten better understanding? If you look at... Um, you know, the kind of borrowing patterns and the thinking and the perceptions in the market then versus the perceptions in the market now, is it changing? I think there's a huge change in perception, particularly because there's another critical ingredient that um, as Tala we are really committed to having it in, and that's around financial literacy. Mm -hmm. and, and financial literacy is all about how do we make you aware around planning your personal finances? Initially, I have to admit, because it was a relatively new space sector, there wasn't much of that, and people ended up borrowing just for the sake of borrowing. It was Mkopo and Rahisi <laughs> coming together. <laughs> so it's just coming, it's a quick loan, yes. let me just quickly check this. But then there, there was a gap, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, it will, it will trap somebody in sort of a debt cycle, where you take a loan, and before you are even done um, using it or there's another loan that is then coming out of it. Mm. And then also with the entry of a lot of players in that space, loan stacking became a, an issue as well. Mm. So you take from Tala, you take from another player. At the end of it, you have like 10 different loans from all these different um, players in the industry. Yeah. 
but is a, as it evolved there there became a need to now how do we also educate our customers because it is also in our interest as a player within that space to ensure that we enhance financial health it is not um, it does not work out for us well when we have issues around debt stacking and yeah. and that trap of debt cycle it's all about responsible lending. How do we make our customers know that I'm taking a loan and it is for a particular purpose and I'm using it in a way that I know at a certain period of time I'm going to get money to repay it back. So it becomes a lot of responsibility in that. So literacy became a big thing for us. And what we did as Tala is even within our app you'll find that we have a learning center mm -hmm. where we continuously put in material that our customers can interact with that can then help them better plan their finances. And even beyond from the app, we've had uh, sessions where we do like workshops mm -hmm. and invite um, players within the SME space to just come and hear from experts around as you, as you do your businesses and you take up debt and loan, how do you then plan yourself in a way that then everything is just um, mm. good. How have you been able to keep it comfortable for folks in terms of interest charges? So one of the biggest things i think that we have done as tala is particularly around transparency and i know uh, interest discussions is is, is is a delicate one mm -hmm. but to ensure that our customers are fully aware because here it's about someone making an informed decision mm -hmm. when they are coming to take a loan with you so it's about how do we make our customers clearly understand and in a very transparent way that this this is the kind of charges that will attract there are no hidden fees this is the interest per this period of time. If you take a loan with us and you are repaying within, um, let's say, 30 days, this is the interest that is going to accrue. If there is a late fee, in case there is, um, you've paid late, this is the kind of fee that comes to it. So we are very clear on that. And even if you go within our app as a, during that process where you need to take out a loan, all this information is given to you in a very clear and accessible manner. It's not hidden within some fine print mm -hmm. where you then get shocked all of a sudden, like, whoa, I didn't realize that there was this case. And even beyond that, we give it a human touch. So you're able to reach out to our customer care and support team. Because sometimes even, you know, as Kenyans, we always want to know we can interact with, I can pick the phone yes. and, and talk to somebody. I don't want just this digital thing. So we have our customer support team that is then able to even break it down further for you and make you understand that this is, this is how the charges look like. And I will say that we, our charges are competitive looking at the space that we operate in um, within the financial space and they are very clear. Mm -hmm. So the transparency for me is what I would say would make our customers then make a, an informed decision so that by the time they are going with Tala, they actually understand this is what I'm going to pay. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, every time we, you know, we talk about this space, the digital and micro lending space, people just think, okay, so this is not for me, right? There are those who look at it and they're shocked when you hear the statistics. Oh, there are actually people who are borrowing uh, hundreds of millions. If you just look at that sector, how people are borrowing and how people are repaying within seven days, within 14 days, and so on and so forth. And you're asking yourself, what are people doing in this kind of money? Yeah. I mean, and how much are they borrowing? Oh, 5K, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, you know? So there's a, always a question mark of, what are people borrowing to do with such small amounts of money? So, debunk that myth. What are people doing borrowing 5,000, 10,000 and repaying in five days and then borrowing again? There are actually a number of use cases okay. for the kind of loans that our customers take. And it's actually interesting that you might think, and, and I like the way you started by saying, somebody will look at this and say, this is not for me. Interestingly, we have people just like myself who actually are employed, they are salaried, but Tala becomes one of the best financial partners they have around. And it's just because of the nature of also how life sometimes um, happens. So you might have a steady income, yes, but you'll have instances where there are certain gaps because of how your income comes in. And life emergencies do not care about that your employer sends your salary on the 29th or the 30th. Mm. If it happens that an emergency has occurred on the 18th and you did not have enough money on you or you didn't have any, you'll have to find a way to sort out that emergency. And it could be an emergency in a number of ways. It could be medical. It could be any number of things. If you're a parent and you have a child, you get a phone call that uh, Mwalimu calls you. Something has happened. We need to rush your kid to the nearest 
um, they say they need around this much to just um, maybe give him medical attention. Mm. And you happen to look at your Mpesa, you only have like maybe 200 shillings, for instance. Mm. Your bank, oh, it's that time of the month, I have like I've maxed my, my the money that I had. Yeah. Mm. Then you remember you have this partner called Tala. And you've probably been a customer with us and you've walked that journey with us. You quickly go into our app, um, probably for what emergency you had, you just needed 4,000 bob. You go in, you say, da -da -da, I need 4,000. And in a matter of minutes, you have the 4,000 wired into your M-Pesa account and you're able to sort that sort of emergency. That's just one uh, use case where you'll see Tala will work with you. And take a step back and go back to when we didn't have players like Tala in the market. Mm. And probably the only people that would um, give you a loan, either the bank or even circles. Now picture when you have such an emergency, how that will be for you. For a bank, I would assume, and I've not done it a lot myself, <laughs> I like to think I'm more of Gen Z millennial, that type of sign. <laughs> you will walk into the bank, um, pay, probably queue for the longest. You will have a stack of papers with you just to prove who you are, what you earn, and all that manner of documentation just to assess your credit worthiness. And before you know it, even the emergency that you wanted to solve clearly, time will not allow you to do that. Mm. But then everything now has become digital. And, and as Tala, we have heavily leveraged on um, AI and machine learning to even do faster approvals. Because from that, we're able to quickly assess, um, can we uh, extend some credit to Latif? And, what, and if we extend, what is the limit we can give him? Mm. And what sort of data points do we pick to ensure that we are responsibly lending to you? Because remember, one of the key things also around the willingness and the capability to repay. Mm. Those are things we have to assess to quickly make the addition and say, if we give him 4,000, based on his transactional history or any other data that you are able to assess, he's able to repay. So that we also make it easier for you as a borrower to repay. Mm. So that's one of the use cases I wanted to highlight. Mm. But there are several other use cases, even from small businesses that use that, um, get credit from Tala to stock up on their stock which then after they've sold the so there's a, a cross cutting um, number of use cases mm. and it could be anyone basically yeah so even anyone who's running a small business because also the other mindset is when you think small business you're thinking you're mama mboga there you're thinking you're jamawa miwa you're thinking you're jamawa nauza mogoka pale but you're not thinking that you also are running a small business mm. right and at some point you will need um, that kind of you know cash injection just exactly. to run your business, right? Okay, let's take a break. It's half past eight. Kenya's biggest conversation is having a Tala conversation, but not just about Tala. It's about data privacy and digital finance and what the companies like Tala and others are doing in the market. Tala, registered and regulated by the Central Bank of Kenya and also registered with the Data Protection Commissioner. So when you talk about data and you talked about data points, which is a big thing that we are coming into, at you're using data points of mine to be able to tell. So what, what information of mine are you looking at? <laughs> and I want to know, man. Yeah. Have you actually seen that SMS from a school yeah, telling me you, you need money? And then you're like, oh, yeah, he has actually received an SMS. How much information are you seeing? Let's discuss that with Kennedy Osore, who is the head of public affairs at Tala, Kenya. This is the Situation Room, the only way.